<clears throat> when you cook corn, the way we cook it with uh, lye from hardwood ashes, it takes that nutritional value that was there in the corn and pumps it up. I don't know what it is, but there's something about the process of the lye from the ashes, what it does to the corn, makes it super food. Some of our people try to shortcut it and use baking soda. That does just the opposite. You'll get the same effect. You'll be able to cook the corn, but it actually depletes the nutritional value of the corn. So remember when I asked, you go to the corner store and get a piece of cornbread or cor you have to ask, was this cooked in wood ashes or baking soda? Because you want the, the wood ash thing. And as consumers, we should ask for that. Okay, corn powders. I tried to make one. And I don't know what I'm doing, you know, so there I'm chopping away at it. And then this one guy comes by the house and says, what are you doing? He said, I'm trying to make a corn pounder. He says, that at, at that rate, it's going to take you 40 years. He says, you're supposed to make a fire in there and let the fire do all of the work. Slow burning fire. Like an old idea, it was just so smart, you know, but it's like, I wasn't smart enough. So you start building a fire in there, and then you'd pack the outside edge, though, with mud so it doesn't burn. Just keeps burning, burning, and you chop it and burn it. It might take you a, a week, maybe a little more. That's how you get it. But isn't, isn't that neat? So you're still doing your work, and all of a sudden your corn pounder is making itself. Anyway, they say the best is the twisted maple. What that means is the grain of the maple turns, because one of the problems is that these will crack. Anyway, the corn pounder, remember those big heads going around, carrying that uh, symbolic corn pounder and making that? Why, why does this make a difference? Well, when I grew up, <coughs> we cheated. We used the meat grinder to crack our corn. Grag right? it and make it metal, quicker, kind of fun. This, if you ever used a corn pounder, it, you have to get used to using it. First of all, it's heavy. And then if there's two people doing that, you have to create this rhythm. And you're letting that corn pounder do the work. But think about that. When we were younger, you could hear somebody pounding corn from the village. It just like drifts across the landscape. It said, somebody's making corn, that pounding, sing. I don't know, it's just really neat. Hardly anybody uses these anymore. Hardly any of them exist. Norton Rickard had one that was 100 years old. And his family, they're still using it. <coughs> Usually a maple or hardwood. And then these too, but the, so you gotta know how to handle that. Because if you don't carve it right away when it's fresh, it turns so hard, you, you have a tough time. So that, that corn pounder and the, um, and the or, or <coughs> pestle and mortar, as they call it, were very important. The height changed, uh, there's all kinds of things. But you can see that and they're cracking the corn, <coughs> pounding it up to make their uh, powder. And then you would use it at different stages. Oh, here's the one. So when <coughs> corn is cooked with wood ash, it, the calcium content shoots way up. The other one drops a little bit, but it kind of stabilizes there. So did our ancestors understand this? I don't know. But they understood in cooking it or using wood ashes to create the lye that softens the, the outside shell. And as you process it, you're then getting to like the meat of the corn. They, they understood that. So that's what they uh, passed on. <coughs> 